Thanks very much for everyone for joining us uh, for the first press conference of the day. And it's with Combank Matilda's goalkeeper and also cap number 185 in Mackenzie Arnold. Mac, how are you feeling a couple of days out since the match against Canada? Good. I'm pumped. Um, I think it's been good to take the last two days um, to really soak in um, that performance and that win um, and be able to enjoy it with each other. Um, but now it's been also good to get back on the field, um, sort of get a flush and get ready to focus on Denmark. Um, for, we've got a couple of new people, so please raise your hand. And we've got microphones on the other side, which will come across to you ahead of the questions. First question. I'm Mackenzie Kieran from Channel 10. Um, who's the Shania Twain fan? <laughs> continue the Canada good vibes? Um, that was actually Georgia, um, our S&C um, assistant. She's she was actually under a little bit of pressure with that. Um, we sort of just told her to put put on some tunes, and that was what she came out with. So thankfully, it was a banger. Otherwise, it could have been a little bit embarrassing for her. Is it representative of a, or am I looking too much into it in regards to the pressure to get to the final 16? Um, you know, in light of that, how would you describe the week to date in regards to? Are we focused to get set for the next level? So, what's the question? <laughs> the, the feeling of the team, you know, um, obviously there would have been a lot of pressure to get to this stage. Right. But now it's obviously a big focus. Is there a way you can describe that, how that week has been and what the feeling of the team is like? Yeah, um, obviously coming off the uh, Nigeria game, there was a lot of disappointment um, around the team and... Um, we took a couple of days to reflect on that and review that. Um, and then heading into Canada, we knew it was a must-win game and we knew we sort of had to block out the, the noise that was going on around the camp and um, just focus on the game and focus on sticking together and that's exactly what we did. So um, it'll be important to replicate that feeling heading into Denmark. Jess. Mackenzie, do you feel like there can be um, a benefit for the team into almost having to given the fact you have to win on Monday night, that like you've had that game of knockout football almost already under your belt going into a game now that or going into the knockout stages? Yeah, for sure. I think actually before the game, um, Tony basically said to us, you know, this is now the round of 32. Um, and this is, you know, we're, we're treating this as our first, first round of knockout games. And that sort of really hit home as well. It was sort of like, you know, this is do or die now. So, um, yeah, I think historically we've always really... Um, performed well with our backs against the wall and thankfully we came out and did that on Monday night so hopefully we can replicate that against Denmark. And a follow up? I'm just curious, you personally, Mackenzie, um, we get into the knockout stages and as we know, <laughs> they bring up the dreaded pens um, discussion that your role can become even more crucial in this stage now. Have you been, obviously today was a light session but do you think about that and how the practice kind of can come to fruition now in this part of the tournament and, and how comfortable do you feel in, in those situations with penalties perhaps popping up from here on out? Um, yeah, to be to be fair, it doesn't really faze me too much. I've been involved in a couple of penalty shootouts um, at a high level with the Asian Cup and thankfully successfully. Um, I know historically we probably haven't... Um, gone too well in penalties. Um, luck probably hasn't usually been on, been on our side with that, but um, yeah, we've, we've been practicing and I've been talking with my coaches, um, just getting little things right for penalties, but we sort of try not to talk about it too much and focus on that too much as, you know, the pressure obviously at the time, um, it, it, it's a real build up, I, I suppose. So um, yeah, when it comes, it comes, but I feel quite confident um, going to penalty shoot out, yeah. Sebastian? Oh, sorry. Uh, uh, Stefan, come back to us. Um, uh, you had fairly light training today. Has there been any change in the way you're training in the run-up to this game? Any concussions? <laughs> no concussions, no. No concussions. Unless you were seeing the dancing out there, there were no concussions, no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And a follow-up, just follow-up on, on the music. Are you also listening to Sydney Melbourne? Uh, Echo? What, what <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know where that came from. We... So I, one of the girls was, she was just being, being one of us, really. <laughs> um, it, it came from the Gold Coast, someone put it on, and now it's become one of the team songs, so there's no real story behind that. Um, was the mic next? 
I know you said that was just a random play. Like, is there something you actually play during, like, if you play a certain song before Canada, or is there something you guys play in the change room before you guys go out each game? Wait, the Eshe song? <laughs> or any song? Just, like, yeah, oh, just right. a, like, a, like a team song pre-match. Um, actually, yeah, there's Strawberry Kisses by Nikki Webster has been a team favourite <laughs> the last couple of weeks. I don't know where that's come from. I think actually it was Steph Catley's favourite song and now we've all jumped on the wagon. <laughs> it's okay, it was on the plane, so they've heard it. Yeah, already. we put it on the plane and everything. It, it's out there. Everyone knows. Anna Harrington. Sorry, I'm about to have a song question for you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you want my Spotify account while you're at it. <laughs> <laughs> um, just uh, about the game the other day, um, we were touching it in print before, but you made this terrific save with your, your leg, when it, I think it was 3-0 up. Um, just in terms of your confidence after maybe no jury of this how big is it knowing that you took that moment and I guess really delivered? Because like, it, it looked like a pretty difficult save attempt as well. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, that's just part of the job. It's just like a striker scoring. It's my job to save goals. So, um, you know, after the Nigeria game, um, I did want to get move on and play the next game and get a good p- performance under my belt. And um, I feel like I did that along with the rest of the team and especially the back line. So, um, yeah, I'm glad I could contribute um, my way to keeping a clean sheet. Um, but, yeah, thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> I'm just going to ask the status. Uh, not, I'll ask this the, the one Sam Kerr question, but I'm not going to ask about an injury status update. The other night, Tony said post match, and it was a really great grab, I think. He said the girls had this mentality heading into Canada that it was like, we've got to go out there, we've got to get this victory and keep Sam on the bench so she can recover another six days and get through this game. And it was all about doing it, not doing it for Sam, but doing it so she can have those six days and buy her that time so she can continue her rehab in a sense. Have you seen an improvement in that sense that with every day you're going to get a a fitter, a healthier Sam Kerr back perhaps in the the team? And and what 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 can you discuss from a player perspective what Tony meant by that? Um, I don't so much think we went out there and played for Sam. Um... Obviously, three weeks. Um, it's always good, it's always going to be you know better to give her an extra week's recovery. Um, she was available if we needed her. Thankfully, we didn't need her, so you know it was great that we were able to give her another um, week's recovery. But in terms of um, going out there and playing for Sam, um, I don't I don't know that was the narrative behind it. But um, yeah, it's it's been good that we were able to get the win and be able to give her another week's recovery. Um, and get her more available for the following game. Final question for Mackenzie. I'll, I'll, actually, we'll go final two. Alicia and then Jess. Thank you very much. Alyssa. Sorry, Alyssa. Yeah. Sorry, I'm having a sh- I'm having a shocker today. <laughs> um, Mackenzie, just on Sam, uh, obviously, about training sessions today. Um, how did she look out on the park? Did she complete your full light training session with all of the team? Yep, she has her own individual plan that she's doing with the um, the doctor and the physio and getting her ready to join in with the team and what she had to do, she looked like she was quite comfortable doing it um, and she was in high spirits after the game, so I assume it all went well. And finally, Jess. Um, I think you touched on it earlier, but just the I am interested in you though, Mackenzie, and how your confidence has been impacted by the fact that you had your hearing aids fitted recently. How much has that impacted you tying down the number one spot as goalkeeper for Australia? Um, it's an interesting question, actually. Um, it's hard for me to say if that has really had an impact um, on my confidence or my performance. Um, it's funny that you actually say that because I obviously wasn't too happy with my performance against Nigeria and I almost look back and I'm thinking, I, I didn't wear my hearing aids that whole day and I was thinking that maybe my brain wasn't stimulated enough, maybe, I'm not sure. It's just a lot of things I think I do tie back to my hearing now. Um, it could have been completely opposite. I, I have no idea, but I do feel a lot more confident within myself um, when I have them in and I feel like... Um, 
I'm not, I think I'm a lot more alert and connected. Um, so whether that has a connection with how I play or not, um, I'm not too sure, but I would like to think it does. Great performance against Canada. Can I just follow up? Why did you take them out before the Nigeria game? Um, I didn't take them out. I actually don't play with them, but it's it was more uh, the lead up. I had just it's almost like trying to get into my daily routine. So I check my phone in the morning, um, and I'm trying to get into my routine that I put my hearing aids in because I I'd <laughs> right now I've forgotten. So <laughs> um, so I am trying to make that still part of my daily routine to uh, make sure I don't forget. But on that particular day, I did forget. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone.